session we have us with us Claudia Smith Hill of the Willis Rotary Club uh, and I would like to introduce Claudia to you. Thank you. <laughs> Claudia can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in Willis? Mm -hmm. Well about myself I was a journalism major in college and my goal was to be a newspaper reporter in those days, women didn't get a chance to work at a newspaper that was all men. But however, when I was a senior, I got a job with the Berkeley Gazette, and all they'd had me do was run around and sell classified ads. But it was so exciting to be in a, in a newsroom. I just loved it. And then, after the war, I married a man who was a forester, and we came up to a place north of Willits on the coast called Jackass Creek. It's my husband's family-owned uh, forest of redwoods there. There was a, an entire culture of, of East Coast yes. relatively wealthy families who invested in West Coast timber property. That's right, they uh, did. The, the, the Rockefellers, people are familiar with Rockefeller Grove and all of that. Mm -hmm. The beginnings of the of the Friends of the Redwoods mm -hmm. were were from that yes, were from that group they of were. people. And, and many of the logging companies started with East Coast money. It did. Yeah. Yes. We were up in the country living in tents. Uh, he was cruising the Redwoods. And the road in from Usall was absolutely, completely impossible to drive, even if it wasn't raining. So um, they were trying to make a re get a, an idea of whether they could get these redwood logs out by ocean, by the sea. And they had a group of men that had some boats down in Fort Bragg and we were supposed to be telling them when the surf was low enough that they could bring a boat up, and uh, this never really occurred. They decided we, had, we can't do this by sea, so the company decided to build a road, and that was nice because then they sent my husband down to Willits to build a sawmill, and that's how I got to Willits. And that was about 1948. 1948. That was when my first son was born. And when, when we came to Willits, you know, there was no place to live. Uh, after we had come down from Jackass, and uh, we, we found a little place, a little old, old um, motel. Now, it's still here. It's out on the road south of Willits that we don't travel on anymore since they put the freeway in. And uh, they made us get out <laughs> on the weekends because they said that was when they had visitors. So we had to go back to Oakland to my family every weekend <laughs> and then come back again <laughs> on Monday morning so he could go to work in Willits. And then finally they had a bunch of surplus housing from the war that they put in down there, it's on East Valley Street, um, kind of almost uh, 
Well, it's right along where those new houses, the uh, by the park, you know, yes. where the apartments are. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They put a whole bunch of new uh, these little um, houses, and we were lucky to get one with two bedrooms. Some of them only had one bedroom. By that time, I'd had my son, and so we had that for three years. And then we bought this property up here on Sherwood Road from Helen Smith, it's part of the ranch, and uh, built our house. And we moved into this house the night that Ken was born. We got one bunch of stuff out of our little house and got it in, and I remember we had a sofa that we got in, and I sat on the sofa for a minute, and then I said, I think I need to go to the hospital. You were a busy girl that night. <laughs> yeah. Moving and having a child. And then a friend helped him to move in, and for months I was always calling her to find out where she put things. <laughs> the Wagonettes and the Burtons had both come about two years before we did, because we were doing this uh, thing at Jackass. And so then when we came, they were already established on Sherwood Road, and we became their neighbors, and the Farleys were uh, a very uh, active Joe, Joe family, Farley. Joe Farley. And uh, yes, we, were all, we all had such wonderful times together on Sherwood Road. And of course, uh, it wasn't paved, it was just a dirt road, and our children would play out on the road. They played kickball, they could hear the logging trucks when they were coming so they could get out of the way, but there was no traffic on it to speak of at all. And it, it has been a wonderful place to live. It still is, but it's a lot different since Brook Trails has come in. Could you tell us just a little bit about Willits itself at that point in time? What was the town like oh, in the late very, 40s, early 50s? It was very small, you know, and the people that lived here had been born and raised here. And I don't know what kept it alive. I, they had lots of cattle, and they ran sheep and uh, horses. And I, I don't know, really, they didn't have much uh, business uh, except, you know, for stores and, and things like that. But when the, when the war was over, lots of people came. Uh, because they knew there would be jobs in the in the lumber industry, and sawmills. Uh, there were 24 sawmills here. Finally, at the end of the uh, big rush, and uh, so Willits then grew. There were other stores that came, and people who started businesses, and became a, a larger town. But it's always been a small town. It's been a town where everybody knows everybody else, and everybody takes care of everybody else. I can't imagine living in the city again. I grew up in Oakland, and I never, until I went to Jackass, I never saw the country, really. Uh, but Willits is, Willits is perfect. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, I know that for for many years you were associated with the Willits News. Yes. Can you tell us how the Willits News got, you got started with the Willits News? Well, you know, actually I was asked if I'd like to have a job at the school, and I did take a job at the school, uh, substituting for someone who was not able to come. I was just sort of a clerk. And uh, people came and asked me, there were a lot of, of uh, social groups that were uh, active in this community at that time. And they all wanted to get little news in the paper about themselves. And they came and asked me, would I write a little story about the women's group or something like that? And so I was doing that all the time at home. And little weddings and uh, other little kind of social things. They called me a social editor, but I didn't really work at the office because there was no room for me there. And then finally, the, the man who was the editor of the Willits News had a stroke. And he was very ill, and there was nobody there except me. And, and the woman that took in the money and sold the papers and so forth. So I went to work at the Willits News full time. 
and it was the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. I just love that job. And uh, after he came back, and I worked for him for quite a while, and then he decided to sell the newspaper. And uh, they sold it to the Ukiah Journal. And the people that they sent up to run the paper, we, we didn't get along very well. And I was always grumbling to my husband about those people. They don't know what they're doing. And finally he said, why don't we just buy the damn thing? So we gathered up four other families in Willits, and we bought the Willits News. And I got to be the editor. And Jim Harden got to be the publisher. And we had the most wonderful 24 years. It was fabulous. And that, and that was my goal all my life. And I was so fortunate that I could find it and do it. What, what part, before we go on to talk a little bit about Rotary and the Rotary history that you have, what part of Willits do you miss the most from those years? What, what has changed that you regret Well, of the course, most? the uh, marijuana thing has changed because it's brought a lot of people into Willits that aren't permanent residents and that aren't uh, people that you really want to make your friends. And uh, there has been more petty crime, I think, since we never had any thing like that, you know. I used to cover the police reports, and uh, sometimes we didn't even have enough to fill the paper. And uh, now, you know, they, they go on for pages and pages, and it's all, I think it's all changed because of the people who come here for the marijuana trade. So how did you become associated with Rotary? Well, uh, because I was the editor of the newspaper, uh, I was uh, asked uh, to be an honorary Rotarian because this was before women were allowed to be Rotarians. And I was that for quite a while. And then when the uh, women were allowed to become Rotarians, I was asked to join. However, at that time, they met at noon on Mondays and Monday was press day for us, and I could never get away for a Monday meeting. So it wasn't really until after I sold the newspaper that I became a real Rotarian. And um, I've always been very proud of the Rotary Club. Uh, it's, a, it's the most wonderful uh, group of people that you could ever have together when we have lunches together, and everybody takes part in it, and they're also willing to help, and it's a wonderful group. How long have you been associated with Rotary? Well, you know, I'm not sure. They tell me that I was I came in in 1999, but I think I came in earlier than that. But I've been an active Rotarian for what, 20 years anyway, mm -hmm. 25 years maybe. Rotary International does a, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, projects also, the Polio Plus project mm -hmm. being one, but there are many others that have to do with health and water supplies and, and uh, <coughs> disaster relief and those kind of things. Uh, have you been involved in any of those programs? Do you, do well, you mostly just that? in uh, contributing to them, yes. I haven't really been active in any of them, but I have always given money to them. Of, of, the, of the projects that Rotary is involved in within the local community, what, what to you is the most appealing project that Rotary does locally? Oh, well that is the um, scholarship of, uh, part of it, I think. Uh, we raise money to give local children scholarships to college, and uh, we have done very well. I think this year, did we raise $10,000? This year we gave 10 $1,000 scholarships, yes. Yes, and I think that's wonderful. It's a really, it does a, a tremendous lot of 
good for our country. The reason that I like to come to Rotary and be a Rotarian, not only is it because of all of the good things that Rotary does, not only within the community, but within the whole world, but it, since I have retired and I'm not involved in the local businesses in town anymore. I like Rotary because it keeps me alert and it keeps my mind going and it keeps me feeling like I'm part of the community and I think you know because I'm nearing 90 I want to keep that. I want to keep my brain active and Rotarians are just the most wonderful people. I have two sons. My daughter uh, unfortunately passed away in uh, 2008, and uh, so I have two boys. One of my uh, sons lives in Burns, Oregon. My other son, Ken, uh, who I'm very proud of, lives right here in Willits. He lives about eight miles up the road, up Sherwood Road. I have one grandson. Um, his name is Seth. He uh, graduated from Willits High School in Humboldt State, and he lives in Eureka, and he is a framer. He works for a photography shop in, um, in Eureka. And uh, so I get to see him quite often. And there's my bird walking on the floor. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Her name is Juma. When we bought Juma, she was just a tiny little bundle of nothing. She didn't have any feathers or anything. And they told me because she was an African gray parrot that she should have an African name. And uh, so I had just finished seeing the movie out of Africa, and one of the houseboys' name was Juma. So I named her Juma. Now she's 13 years old. You, it was funny. Your, your first husband was K.O.? Yeah, well, he, his name was Kenneth O. Smith. Uh, people called him K.O. I called him Baiji. That's what his family called him. I don't know where that nickname came from, but everybody knew him as Baiji, too. And, 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 his, and his job was originally, his degree was in forestry? In forestry. But he was, but mostly, he was involved mostly involved in, in sawmills. Yeah, in, yeah. in the mill industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And he worked for Els and uh, at Willits Redwood Products, and then he worked for um, Harwood and worked for Harwood Products. He was the man who who was instrumental in in the Willis Airport. Uh, yeah, part of it. Yes, yes, he was. There were three or four men that put that airport in. They used to fly the planes in on a. a kind of just a meadow downtown. And it came, they would come over uh, the ran uh, rancher's house down there to land. And the rancher got tired of having these airplanes coming so close over his house. And he made a big fuss about it at the city council and so they shut it down. So then Russell Ells Russell and a bunch of other fellows got together and put the airport up on the hill there, which in what is now Brook Trails. You know, they did a good job and the airport has uh, thrived and grown and um, Ken, my son, is on the airport board now and both of my sons fly and uh, kind of followed in their father's footsteps and they love airplanes and uh, I think our little airport is quite nice. Uh, Jim Harden keeps his plane there, yes. and uh, he has his plane annual in June every year in Burns, Oregon, because he likes the man that does the work up there. So in June, I get to ride with him in his airplane up to see my son in Burns uh, every year. And Jim is a Rotarian also, so Jim that's another connection with Rotary that you have. Yes. But one thing that I'm very proud of was that um, I had a woman who was a copywriter for me, and her name was Rena Lynn. Rena Lynn. Rena Lynn. And Rena was a very in 
interested in the whole uh, area around here. And she did a wonderful series about Kovlo. Yes. yes. Uh, and we, it, we had so many people, it ran in the paper for many weeks, and we had so many people asking us and coming in to buy a paper to find the next uh, episode that Rena and I put it together in a book. I think we As came part of that, didn't you also, didn't Rena also write several stories about the Willits, the Little Lake Valley also? Yes, she, she did. She carried and, on from there? And how Willits was established, the town of Willits was established, and uh, about the Bechtel family, and she, she wrote many stories that were very interesting about local people in this area. And the and the feud between the Frosts and the yeah. and, and I forget the name of the other family that led to a shootout where six people maybe eight people were killed, were killed. right after yes. the Civil War. Yes. And if you visit the Willits Cemetery today, you find all six of those graves together with the same date that's on right. the tombstones yes. up there. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's yes. Uh, I've been up there. That's quite an interesting. Mm -hmm quite an interesting story behind that. You lived through the Great Depression in this yes. country. Uh, over yes. the last several years we've experienced what has been referred to as Great Recession. Do, do you have any, again, do you have anything to say to young people today who are having those experiences? You know, when, when the big depression was on and I was a child, I didn't even know what was happening. My family survived it. Uh, my father always had a job. Um, my mother lost a little money that she had in the bank that I remember that she was very sad about. But otherwise, we made it through, and I didn't even realize that there was a depression. I didn't know what a depression was. When I was in school, we just went to school. And we came home and did our homework. And I remember when I was pretty young, always hurrying home, to listen to the radio for Little Orphan Annie. And, and that was about what we had for our, and sometimes we got to go to a Saturday matinee in Oakland. We could walk to the theater, and it cost 10 cents, I remember, to get in. And that was wonderful, you know, we thought we were having a great time. But the most of the things that we did, we went skating on the sidewalk and we rode our bicycles and we played together after school, and uh, I feel sorry for these young people that think they have to go out and get on drugs and, and do awful things to have fun anymore. Um, I, I see a lot of them downtown that look like, it's very sad. Very sad. Very sad. Do you have any regrets? You know, I think I'm the luckiest person in the world. I've thought about that several times. Everything has, and you know, after my husband died, and I was still at the Willits News, fortunately, because it kept me alive, and then I met Dick Hill. And, well, I knew him all the time because he used to come from Laytonville. He had a real estate business there, and he, uh, he came down and complained about the school board, and he came. <laughs> chatted with me often and then after my husband died about four years later I married Dick Hill and and he was fun too and that was a whole different uh, part of my life because I wasn't working anymore and we bought a trailer and we went to Arizona every uh, winter for about three months and played golf and I took trips and we just had a wonderful time and unfortunately, I lost him too in 2008. So uh, now I'm on my own. Uh, I'm making out all right. What do you enjoy most today? You have a beautiful home and I like a, a comfortable life. And, yes. and what, what do you enjoy most today? I enjoy my friends. And I, I'm it's so thankful that I have so many good friends. I belong to PEO, which is a women's group for educating women, and we meet quite often, and those people are my, like my sisters. And uh, then I have Rotary, and um, I go to church. My church is just something that I 
uh, and just I, ca I couldn't live without. And I have various jobs that I do at church, and I have a set of friends there that are so so close to me that I, I feel very happy. I have never had a, a, well, except for the death of my child and my husband's, I've never been sad. It's just a wonderful, happy time all the time. I wish it didn't rain so hard, but that's all right. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't think of any better way to end this than that. I hope you found this interesting tonight. I hope you've learned a little bit more about the Willits Rotary Club and Rotary International. And I'd like to invite you to join us to meet the next featured Willits Rotarian.